We'd like to give a shout out to World 9 Gaming. Uh, from PCs to arcades and consoles old and new, World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video gaming experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. With their dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expansive collection of games and consoles, World 9 is ready to take your event to the next level. For information on booking and upcoming events, check world9gaming.com. And with that, it's Legend of K Anniversary with Dark Terex. All right, so I guess we'll get this going then. Um, let's make sure, all right. So I do need to play this on easy uh, to actually go quickly on this. Um, due to enemies taking a lot more uh, hits in harder difficulties, but um, yeah, I guess we'll get going. Uh, ready on timer? All right, so three, two, one, go. Yeah. All right, so I can skip like almost every single cutscene that's in here just by hitting triangle, which is pretty fantastic. Um, here at the very beginning, I just need to run an errand for the mayor of this uh, cat village that I'm in. Um, I'm going to start rolling everywhere because it pushes me forward just slightly. So, slightly faster if you're able to get through it, but it's not too big of a difference. All right, so I got whatever I was supposed to get here. Honestly, it's been a long time since I played through the story, so <laughs> I'll try to remember what I can of it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be skipping quite a bit of this game. Um, so I did that uh, in order to unlock the next area that I'm supposed to go to. This area is, you know, kind of your tutorial on how to do all your controls and everything. Um, so instead of going to actually do the tutorial stuff, I'm just going to skip it all. I become a recurring theme in this game at some point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So this game was actually a PS2 original, um, and then Anniversary is just the HD remake. Luckily for us, it's the exact same run on both of them. I can do every single trick that was in the PS2 version on, as I can on any other one. Um, the only difference is that this cutscene right here, or the speech that the master has, is not skippable on Anniversary, but it is on PlayStation 2. Ah, oh, I missed it. All right. Yeah, so, jump is a bit tricky. So the, the only other difference is that there's actually a new camera added for this particular version as well. Yeah. Uh, the original camera is not good, and he will not be showing because it, it also like caused issues in the practice room. Also, that is the only time in this entire game that a wall will properly work. Pretty just much, so happens yeah. to allow us to skip uh, doing like all the tutorial fight right there. Yeah, um, so by doing that, yeah, I just skipped the entire tutorial area, so it's a pretty big sequence break. I do actually still fight the master here at the end, having, you know, actually, quote unquote, gone through my tutorial. Yeah, tutorial jumping off a wall, what's the difference? Did I make it? Okay, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's the first level done. And um, I hope you guys like bombs. <laughs> You're gonna hear that a few times. Um, we'll see if I get good luck here. Okay, that is actually fantastic luck. Get on coins. So let's see if I can set this up correctly. Okay, good. So what I did there is I took damage and then I killed myself. Um, and in the middle of the death animation, I fell onto an, a new item that I've never picked up before, in this case, the silver coin. Um, and by doing that, the new item animation cancels out the death animation, and so it considers me both dead and alive currently. So I can just go through the stages as if I'm alive, even though I'm technically not. So technically, I would have had a uh, fight there before I got to the spot. Um, that I was able to skip because I was actually dead, technically. Um, the other thing about uh, being dead is this is pretty much you know half the run right here, is I get to go out of bounds and then just float over to the loading zone. Um, so right now I'm playing off of the mini-map in the corner. Um, 
and just that. Uh, if I had any health, I would actually void out and go back to wherever my last save point was. But um, since I'm dead, the game doesn't actually register that, and I can just go over and still hit the loading zone, and it works for some reason. So this one's almost through. So who found the, uh, like, death skip trick? It's kind of bizarre. Oh, geez. Uh, which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> There's very few runners for the game, so <laughs> they would have to honestly tell you which one it was. Um, I was the first non-European runner for this game, so... Have you considered naming the trick Spooky Ghost Glitch? To what? Spooky Ghost Glitch. No. <laughs> we should have named it Schrodinger's Cat, honestly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as who found it, uh, it could be like one of three people. <laughs> um, they would have to tell me which one it is. So I apologize. <laughs> They're going to nail me for that later. <laughs> Yeah, so on higher difficulties, these um, enemies will take more hits to die. So this fight will be a lot quicker on easy mode. I need those coins, please. <laughs> I'm picking up a few extra just in case. 120 is what I'm aiming for. I, I can get, I think, 114 is my minimum, but I'm trying to be a little bit safe on here. So I'm going to buy a magic potion here and then not use it at all um, for a good majority of the game. I'm not going to actually use it to refill my magic. I'm going to use it to get the zombie state much later on in the game. Oh, hey, I actually got that first try. I never get it in the run. <laughs> it's like the easiest out of bounds, and I always fail it whenever I actually have a run going. <laughs> All right, so here I need to crawl under, jump across, and then jump straight back. And we're done with that one. So I'm skipping a lot of side areas. Um, you know, right there you saw a rabbit. In the story, I'm supposed to save the rabbits, these frogs, and some pandas later on. Um, you're not going to see the rabbits again. I just saved them. So, you know, that was fine. Uh, now I've got to go through this dragon cave. Um, this one I can't actually go out of bounds in that I'm aware of. And if there is, it's just slow enough or so far out of the way that it uh, wouldn't be worth it. <clears throat> So we actually get to play through this level. So where's the metal cap in this area? <laughs> Got the crystals. Uh, so this platform right here is actually based on a global cycle. So if I was slow through that, um, I'd have to wait for another cycle for it to come back around. Okay. Let's see. You have time for one donation here if you have one. All right, we have a $100 donation from Mr. Cab. He says, let's go, Terex. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cab. <laughs> Good friend. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to see the dragon once more here. So here I'm going to skip a cutscene just by jumping outside of the range of it like that. I'm going to show it anyway because this dragon looks really funny when he flies. <laughs> so, But anyway, um, I can skip that just by going outside of it uh, and, and then just getting the gold that I need there. So the reason that I bought that magic potion earlier and uh, is because items are cheaper early on in the game versus later on. So I need to buy it when it's you know actually cheap and I have money for it. Okay, so here I need to buy a Berserk Potion and then go out of bounds. Good day. There he took damage so that he could jump on top of the thorns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, it was a damage boost there. Okay. Dang. Come on. All right, so they just decided to put hitboxes on like everything, so I can just walk up here when I'm not supposed to. I hope you all enjoyed the popping effects in the of the, of the ground. 
it was probably cracks me up because it's like the game's trying to decide whether or not it's like, should I show this? Yeah, oh wait, never mind, I'm taking that away again. So all the hitboxes are still active, whether or not the platform is shown or not, but it's still just kind of, the texture popping is pretty special. Dang, all right. This one's a little tricky to hit. Um, I don't have the zombie state, so I have to actually just jump straight out here and hope that I hit the loading zone while I'm alive. Otherwise, I'll just keep reloading in that spot. So we'll see how long this takes me. <laughs> Luckily, um, the save point, even if I like game over or anything, it'll put me still behind this wall, so I'm stuck back here regardless to get this trick. There we go. Good job. <clears throat> so here I'm actually at the beginning of the frog area. Um, we're not going to see much of the frogs. I'm going to do another trick here just called attack hovering. And basically all it's what it sounds like. I just straight up mash attack, and it allows me to walk across areas that I'm not supposed to. Um, technically, I'm supposed to be using a boat to go across this mud here in the swamp. But um, you know, why, why do that when I can just attack? Yeah, and the boat controls are absolutely horrible. Would not recommend. Good, okay. I was hoping I didn't miss that one because that one's a really long one to set up again. So I just skipped another huge area just by doing that. So I'm going to take damage here by uh, killing myself on the side so that I can get zombie state uh, off of a chest here coming up. One thing that's really uh, cool to note about this game, in my opinion, uh, when you play on a harder difficulty, it doesn't just affect like enemies, how their damage is or your health or anything like that. It actually has environmental differences. So those logs that are over there, um, they actually would have like, swamp gas on them instead that you have to try and platform around. So I don't know, it makes it more fun for playing on a harder difficulty. All right, so I'm going to drop a bomb. Then I'm going to open this chest at a delay so that I grab this armor. So again, every time he enters the zombie state, he has to have a new item because the game remembers which items he's picked up in the past, so... Yes, so it has to be with a, yeah, like I said, a brand new item, so I can only do this once with every single one. I do need to be careful here. Uh, I've got to hug this wall because that save point is right there. Um, and if I save right there, then uh, I have no backup, so... <laughs> Other than the save, so... Good thing the save points are pretty, you have to be pretty close to range for them. The save points refill your health. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier, which is why I have to avoid them. So if you it just takes you out of the zombie state with no ill effects, right? Yeah, it would just take me out of the zombie state and I would just keep going. But at that point, I'm out of the zombie state and I can't do what I need to. Oops. So I can actually change direction if I want to doing this. Um, similar to Ocarina of Time, uh, you can do, uh, I think that's what they call S-turning or holding an S position. Uh, basically, when you hold your control stick, just tilt it to the side. Um, so if I really feel like turning, I can do that. But I'm going to attack hover here so I can uh, go out of bounds. Um, and I have to actually attack in order to go out of bounds. I can right now walk across the mud without dying, because I'm you know already dead. But um, I need to find a way to push myself out of bounds. Um, the other reason that I get zombie state here, other than actually doing the out of bounds and hitting the loading zone, is those hornets that you saw there on those platforms. Um, if I was alive, they would come and attack me. So I would not even be able to get over here if that was the case because they would just not let up on attacking me. But since I'm dead, you know, it doesn't matter. So jump out of bounds and let's see if I hit this one quickly or not. Good, okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is the one boss fight you'll actually see me do. Um, so I'm going to use my Berserk Potion that I bought here and then I'm going to die. And what this is going to do is permanently apply it to my weapon for this level. Before, um, I would save the Berserk Potion for the second phase of this turtle. Um, but shoutouts to Xander Goth who uh, found uh, that trick with the Berserk Potion when he came and learned this game. So even though the particles aren't on the sword, it is still active, right? Uh, yes. I'm not entirely sure why that missed, but that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the Berserk Potion normally would be on a timer, so I would normally save it just for the second phase because it takes a lot longer. He does more to his attack. But um, with that trick, I can use it for both phases instead. Here I'm purposely, purposefully going to take damage because I need to get rid of my armor for an upcoming stage to, again, get the zombie state. All 
right, boss dud. And we're out of there. Okay, so upcoming here is the f one and only race that you'll see me do in the game. Um, the game throughout uh, makes you do these races, usually while you're riding a boar. This one I'm going to ride a dragon. Um, there's also one where you ride a wolf. Um, this is the most tolerable of them. The game is really, like the game is like really fun. Just I admit the uh, races can be a little tedious on how you have to get through them. But this one is a uh, this one's pretty nice to us. Um, a funny thing, um, I'm not going to end up showing it here just because it'll waste a lot of time for it. Um, but if I quit out to the main menu here, for some reason it uh, gets rid of like 90% of the bombs in here. Um, you know, so it makes the flight like it's nothing, but uh, that's a little bit slower, so I'm just going to keep going through it. I do need to take damage here um, and lose my armor before the next area. <clears throat> and uh, if you have time for a donation, you can do that now. All right, we have $15 from Brewster. Uh, we say, hey, GDQ, can't... Can't watch the the run right now because of work, but there's always time to drop a donation for a good cause, and also wish my overseas friend Terex good luck on his run. So good luck, Terex, and I'll be watching this later on YouTube. Right. Please put this donation towards the runner's choice. Thanks, Rudy. I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, so I've lost my armor. At this point, I actually do need to make sure that I don't die. Because um, otherwise, I'll have to start that flight entirely over. <coughs> uh, if I miss a ring on this, uh, it, it does actually require you to go through every single ring, so I cannot miss. <coughs> All right, we're out of there. So now um, comes the start of the randomness of this speed run. So right now, I need to get a regular bomb like that, and I need to get what exactly what I need, except I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to I have to have the uh, new item animation for the bomb on the next level. So I have to uh, pick it up very carefully, and I accidentally uh, ran into it. So okay, that's one item. That's another item. And now I need a regular bomb. Okay. So if I just block like that over and over, it actually uh, uh, stops me from having the new item animation. So I need to get the zombie sting. I'll get it off of this Berserk Potion. I need to get it off of one of three items at this point, and I'm going to use all three of them at some point, so I just have to remember which ones I've already done it on. So if you use the Berserk Potion, I'll use the Flash Bomb and a Jar of Hornets later on. Uh, so right there, I just roll next to the cart, and it pushes me out of bounds pretty easily. <laughs> and um, I get to skip, I don't know, like two areas in this right here. Um, the, last, the last area skipped another couple of them. Right here, I'm supposed to go to a boss fight uh, on this boat. I believe it's on a time cycle for like when the boss fight actually starts, but we're just going to jump over here and uh, skip it. All right, so I took damage on the urchin there, and now I actually will pick up the bomb uh, with the new item animation. I do have to stand far enough away from any item that I get because if I'm too close, it's just as if I was, you know, blocking and picking up a new item. Um, in that, it won't actually give me a new item animation. And for some reason, with the coins, they just assume that you've had all the coins at some point, so they stop giving you new item animations for the coins. So that's why the jade coins there didn't actually give me a new one. Here, I actually have to jump out of the water um, because. As far as the game is aware, I did that attack cover to go underneath uh, the w and into the water. <clears throat> so the game stored that I was attacking. So if I just uh, swim out into the open like this, uh, I actually would start falling indefinitely because it would start attacking from the air. Um, so I have to make sure that I jump out of it, otherwise I would be stuck in one spot. And you have time for a donation here. This is a pretty long out of bounds. Uh, I've got to flow a float of fairways. <laughs> All right, we have $25 from Hercules Bench Press. It says, hi, Terex and other Rook fellows. Good luck on the run, buddy. Hopefully, I'll get to see you all soon. Thanks, Herc. We also have a $50 donation from Brennan. Uh, does not leave a comment, but it's appreciated all the same. 
And you can, you can probably read another, like, two if you want to. Uh, actually, I will uh, remind people about uh, upcoming upcoming incentive uh, for Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Uh, there's a blindfolded demise fight. Uh, it's we need fifteen thousand, and we're sitting at nine thousand five hundred and one dollars and sixty four cents. So if you want to see the final boss fight done blindfolded, get that money in. As an aside, it's now raining out of bounds right here. So that's what those like random particles are. That's one of the bosses of the game. We're not going to ever see him. <laughs> like most of the game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so here, um, this is the worst level in the game, so we'll see how long it takes me to get this. So I really hope you like bombs. <laughs> so I have to get Zombie Stay off of this extra life that's down here, but I have very little room to work with, so hopefully it does not take me too long to get on top of this thing. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so that's part one of why this level is pretty terrible. Um, so I'm going to go out of bounds here just by rolling, dropping, and yay, we're out. <laughs> and now I have to do this out of bounds setup. Uh, this right here, I have to go off screen for about 12 seconds. So I have actually no in visual indicator as to where this loading zone is. And if I fail it, I've got to go back and reset it up. <laughs> so let's see. I think that's good. So one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, I missed it. It's around here. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I got it. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I will gladly take that. <laughs> I had a save set up for that just in case it took me like four minutes to get through that. <laughs> So as an aside, you said on the PS2 version you had a compass or something on the mini-map that helped with that, right? Yes, that is the other difference between it. Um, uh, so on the PS2 version, yeah, there was a compass on the mini-map. For some reason, they didn't include that in the anniversary edition. So uh, the PS2 version can set it up based on what the mini-map has. Um, I unfortunately cannot do that here. Uh, so I got Zombie State off of my second item. I have one left. Unfortunately, the last one that I got is the rarest one, so hopefully that doesn't take too long in the next area. Um, but uh, I got the Zombie State there. And if you noticed, when I first went into that little alcove, um, it did a cutscene that I skipped. And technically, it would have that going out as well. So it stored that cutscene of me going outside of it. Um, but because I'm dead, it didn't, you know, actually trigger it. So I'm going to refill my health here, and it's going to trigger it. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, it puts me, what I need to do is go here, go back to the main menu, continue the game, and this puts me behind a barrier of a rather huge fight that I just uh, skipped. So I'm going to drop a flash bomb here, basically so I can get regular bombs. So the magic potion that I bought all the way at the beginning of the game, I'm finally going to have a use for right here. Again, this is a, something that Xandergoth found. Um, so if I stand on this switch here, it opens that door. So I'm going to drop the magic potion and get the uh, zombie state off of it. And the game thinks that I'm still on top of that switch rather than having to solve this puzzle here uh, to get a block on top of it. So uh, the door is still open. And since I'm dead, you know, what, what, are, what is lava? You guys have heard of uh, the floor is lava. This is the lava is a floor. <laughs> uh, you got time for a donation here. I'm going to be rolling for a bit on the, on the lava. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I do want to remind the audience of uh, another incentive that's coming up uh, for Sylvan Tale. Uh, we can play with the English patch. Uh, we have uh, $1,919.79 out of $5,000. So if you want to actually understand what the characters are saying, please get that money in. Okay, so I do need to be careful not to fall into these pits here. You know, if I was alive, it would just kill me, and that's not an issue. But since I'm dead, uh, I would have to start over. <laughs> okay, so we're going to fall down here. We're going to crawl just a little bit, and then attack, and we're out of bounds. 
So again, I'm playing off of the minimap, going straight to the loading zone. For whatever reason, this one always gives me difficulty. It's literally right on top of the door, but I can never hit it, so we'll see. <laughs> There we go. Nice. OK, so we'll see how long this grind takes. I need a jar of hornets. I got the jar of hornets. Wow. <laughs> There's some good luck right there. That's OK, that was almost really bad. That heart almost hit me, and I'd have to uh, redo it again, because <laughs> I would have full health then. I, oh, oh. <laughs> well, I get to do it again anyway, because that was too far out of range. So hopefully I get it quickly again. <clears throat> All right. It is nice this game does have like very quickly like jump back to the menu and then go back in. It's super nice, yeah. If you ever make a mistake, she's like, oh, just go reload and it's over with. Flash bomb, I need a jar of hornets, come on. At least we're, the audience is getting an idea of how rare it is. Yes, <laughs> that's true. It, it is by far the rarest of the three. I've seen multiple berserk potions already. The flash bomb is the most common one that I can gather. But we'll get nothing that time, great. <laughs> And I'm guessing it's pretty hard to like to tell the distance between you and the item as well. Uh, sometimes it is, yeah. Especially when I'm on like uh, terrain here that's kind of like got hills to it, because that affects it slightly. Okay, we're gonna go over here so I don't. <laughs> I didn't kill myself. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my God. Oh my. <laughs> put an afro on him next time so he's a little bit taller. I guess so. Or Spy can even be in this game right now. The old strat was to actually play through this level and then do a long, really long fight at the end and then get Zombie State off of a key. Um, but even with that, even with all the randomness I'm getting, this is still going to be faster than if I had to go and do that. <laughs> so is this pretty unlucky even with the, like, but how many tries does it normally take to get the Hornet? Um, I can, I don't know, I usually get Hornet, I don't know, within seven tries or something. Problem is I can't be too close either. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh my no. god. I have to do it again because the heart refilled my health. <laughs> I, can't, no. I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, all right. And that's just more bad luck right that there. Was really bad there, luck. there was just a heart just happened to be in the bottle next to it. Well, the hearts spawn if I have two health or less, so. I guess it was more my fault that I didn't break open the last uh, pot. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna break both of these just in case. <laughs> I'll get this at some point, I promise. Here we go. All right. So here I'm just going to jump. <laughs> I'm out of bounds. First try. Yeah, first try. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ways to float on this one, so if you have something to plug, go for it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we have a $10 donation from Ardom. This game is one of my all-time favorites since I bonded with a lifelong friend over it back when it came out. Good luck with the run, Dark Terex. Thank you. 
It's still my favorite out of bounds in this run. It's just like there's nothing you do. You just go to the wall and then just double jump and you're out. Yeah, it's just that one spot. You just double jump. It's like, all right, we're out. Walls are a suggestion. Oh yeah, and um, the items. If he doesn't do it very, if he doesn't like do the death uh, zombie uh, walk pretty quickly, he um, the items will disappear after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like from what I've seen, it looks like you have a fairly large amount of time to get yourself set up and in position. Though, so yes, that's... yeah, that that shouldn't be an issue. Um, that'd only be an issue if I'm explaining stuff to somebody and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Nice. Okay, I usually have trouble with that one, so I'm very happy. At least I got that quickly. <laughs> All right, so this is the final level um, with the final boss. We're not going to even see him, so uh, we're going to take damage off of the fire and then get zombie state off of this health jar, or I'll do it again because I was too close to it. So that's what I guess I get to show then what happens if you're too close. So I do have to be a set distance away, which is why it's a little tricky sometimes to set it up. Basically, you kind of want to get it like right as you finish the falling animation. So you see he's gonna like fall, and looks like he was a little too close again there. Mm -hmm. But like as he falls, he'll like kind of hit the item, and then he'll do like the Zelda da 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 da. Like I got the item thing, and that's when the zombie state occurs. There we go. Okay, so I would go through this door normally to fight the final boss for the first phase, and then that pillar that's in the middle would be where the second and third phases are, but I can just roll between the door here and uh, go to the loading zone. And as soon as I hit this, it's time, so be ready on that. Cool final boss. Yeah, <laughs> great final boss. Time. All right, so that was Legend of K. You saw, I don't know, 30% of it. <laughs> was it actually 30%? I have no idea. I think it's only like 20% at most. But anyway, it's still fun regardless. It's, I do recommend playing it. However, if you do play it, I recommend playing not on English. The English voice acting is actually really bad. <laughs> Played in German. That's what the original uh, game was made in. So, But yeah, Legend of K. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. All right, that's been it for me. Now I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Game and Shout while we set up for Simpsons Hit and Run.
All right, what is up and good morning everyone. I am Mr. Game and Shout and I will be keeping you company here as we get ready for our next run that is going to be The Simpsons Hit and Run with Sadly Badly. I do have a donation while we're getting setting up there. $15 in from Tira Lira. Happy Tuesday, GDQ. This is always one of my two favorite times of the year, and you only get one guess as to what my other favorite time is. Shout out to my favorite nerds on the GDQ Discord. You know who you are. And a reminder to a certain donation reader that he's slacking on his safari. Donation goes to announcer's choice because I trust his judgment better than mine. Yeah, I got to work on that safari, don't I? Checking in on some of our bid wars going on and incentive runs, looks like we are just about $500 away, I think I saw, yeah, $500 away from unlocking the slime ending for Dragon Warrior 3, so definitely get some donations in if you're interested in seeing that. Also, Super Metroid, save versus kill the animals, quick update on that, save is currently in the lead by about $1,500, so if you're looking to sway that, I think we've still got plenty of time. Definitely get your donations in and we will get them added to the standings. <laughs> 